have been talking about innovation. Now I would like to talk about innovation with an E. And for this, I'd like to invite two speakers, Mr. Alejandro Agag, Chairman of Formula E Holdings, and Mr. Peter Rollinson, CEO and CTO of Lucid Motors. Um, so, Alejandro, I believe you have a video that you'd like to share with us and tell us a little bit about uh, Formula E. Yes. Um, well, hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. Um, it's my third time as a speaker in the FII, so I've been here in every FII, and uh, I hope to keep coming. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> please invite me. Um, and last year we were here, and we, we announced that uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was becoming the house, the home of uh, Formula E. And uh, today we are making another very exciting announcement. Uh, the Kingdom is going to become the home of Extreme E, which is a new championship. Many of you have seen this SUV car at the entrance of the, uh, of the hotel, of the Ritz. And uh, the two main electric car championships are going to take place in Saudi Arabia. And this would not happen, of course, without Vision uh, 2030 and the vision of His Royal Highness um, Prince Mohammed. So it's, it's great that we're going to have this here. And to tell you what Extreme is, I think the best way is to show you this video. Begins. Yes, so thank you. Um, so just to clarify, we are going to take these electric SUVs to the most extreme locations in the planet, to places that, that are already destroyed. We're going to the Amazon rainforest, for example, to raise on an area that has been devastated by fire. We're going to the Arctic in areas where there used to be ice, and now there is no more ice. We're going to the Himalayas in valleys where there used to be glaciers. Now there are no glaciers. So we're going to highlight with this championship the big challenges that the planet is uh, facing. And we're going to race also in Saudi Arabia. We're going to talk about desertification. This country has the largest desert, continuous desert in the planet. And we're going to talk about you know, what technology can do to solve the challenges of climate. Like Formula E with Formula cars, this becomes the new off-road electric car championship globally. That's remarkable. And especially the mission makes it all the more profound and poignant. Um, Peter, I'd like to come briefly to you since you supply the batteries. Yes, um, indeed. And we would love to hear a little bit more about uh, Lucid Motors and the batteries with some slides, I believe, that you have. Certainly. Well, first of all, thank you. It's a great honor to be here today. Um, I'm the CEO of Lucid Motors, and we're a Californian uh, based uh, uh, Silicon Valley based electric car company and we have some slides to show to that effect um, now 
the, the car is uh, the, the Lucid Air. That is our first production car. And uh, our uh, purpose, our mission, is to inspire the adoption of sustainable mobility and unashamedly do that by the most uh, magnificent product, uh, cars that all the world is going to want. Um, we do all the technology in-house, and because of that, we have total control of that electric powertrain, which is truly state-of-the-art. We're able to reimagine the car, reimagine the layout of that vehicle, and we're able to make a car which is more compact on the outside and much more spacious on the inside. And actually, remarkably, we've done that to such effect that on the outside, our car has a smaller footprint than a Tesla Model S, even smaller than the new Porsche Taycan. But it has more interior space than a long wheelbase S-Class Mercedes. So we have a car which looks like this. And you know we have rear seats which are aircraft inspired, which have more tilt than even a Maybach in this compact package. We're a Silicon Valley company, and as you'd expect, soft, software plays a leading part, a leading role in this creation. So we have unsurpassed user experience with all the programming created in-house. Uh, as you might expect, this leads to a car with outstanding performance and range. We have 0 to 60 sub 2.5 seconds, but that's, that range is landmark will launch with over 400 mile range. And that's not with some urban cycle. That's at highway speed. That's at freeway speed, because the car is so efficient. And therefore, the Lucid Air will be the first intercity electric car, I think a real game changer. Um, here we have an artist's impression of our factory, which we're currently creating in Casa Grande in Arizona, where we're going to build uh, the air and subsequent models. But I really want to say this, that uh, I think that I, I speak for all the management team at Lucid, that we have a huge commitment to helping uh, contribute to the genesis of a motor industry here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. One thing I'm particularly proud of is the relationship with this man here, Alejandro. Um, we are the official supplier of battery technology to Formula E, and we supply all the teams, uh, all the teams on the grid. And we've done that since last season, a year ago. We've had a 100% reliability record so far, and we hope to keep that reliability record going. This is a picture of the pack we designed, created, and actually manufacture in our head office in uh, California, and this is supplied to all the teams. Uh, one of the interesting features of this pack is this trapezium shape. It's an innovative shape. It shows that a battery pack can be more than just a square box. Look how it's sculpted to fit the structural and aerodynamic package of the race car. Really integrated, joined up thinking within the car. Battery much more than just a source of pure energy. And this is the facility, our facility in California, where we make those packs. So uh, we aim to get our car into production in Arizona uh, at the end of next year. And hopefully, some lucky customers will be taking delivery uh, in the kingdom uh, early in 21. Thank you so much. Uh, so Alejandro, we a lot of what goes into um, Formula E, Extreme E, is the technology. So what specific technologies are you using that's driving this kind of transformation? So obviously the big transformation, and uh, Peter just said, they provide the batteries for Formula E. The big, big stop is the battery. That's the big limit of electric cars at the moment. And they do a fantastic job uh, providing our batteries for Formula E. But I always get asked the same question. Who goes faster, Formula One or Formula E? <laughs> we could go faster, but only for like 20 minutes, until he makes a battery that can make possible <laughs> to go for like an hour, an hour and a half. The big, the big frontier is the battery. But I, I like to see this as we are living on the pre-discovery era. Um, a few decades ago, an engineer called Moore discovered that he could store 
information on silicon. And that changed the world. And we have on our mobile phones more processing capacity than computers before that moment that would occupy huge buildings. I'm hoping that there will be the same discovery for energy storage. It's also a chemical problem. Somebody needs to crack it. Hopefully you will, or someone will. And then our batteries on our phones will last for a month, and our electric cars will go for 2,000 kilometers. That moment hopefully has to come. For the moment, increases in battery capacity are 5% a year. That's, that's OK, but it's not good enough. So battery technology really is the, the mother of all the technologies that we need basically to do the next technology revolution. And hopefully, then we can go faster than Formula One. Peter, when is that going to happen then? All pressure on you. Well, a lot of this, you're actually right. Um, the advancement in cell chemistry uh, is, uh, is moving forward, but we're waiting for a real big breakthrough in that area. But I think we need to distinguish between the skills and um, the, the expertise in creating cells and the expertise in creating battery packs. Our core expertise is actually integrating those cells, uh, many thousands of units, integrating them in a cohesive way with an advanced battery management system to create a pack. I mean, Peter, another thing I'd like to ask you, you know, you have a road car now. Um, often, you know, you have used the road car technology to also inform your design, mm. uh, race cars, <coughs> and vice versa. That's very unusual, isn't it? Yes, actually, there's a beautiful circle at work here because when we first won the tender for Formula E, we drew heavily upon our road car technology. Unashamedly, that was our basis of our knowledge to integrate into this groundbreaking pack for Formula E. Because before then, the, the Formula E cars were limited to half race distance because the battery technology was limited. Our pack doubled the energy capacity, enabled the cars to run a full race distance, and we drew heavily upon our road car technology to do that. But the wonderful thing here is that we've learned so much through our tenure supplying to Formula E that we've now been able to use that knowledge that we've accrued through the racing program and put that back into our road car. And it's gone full circle. And this is a great example of racing improving the breed. So I want to thank you, Alejandro, for creating this series because this is already benefiting uh, road car technology. But Alejandro, there's so much excitement about electric vehicles and formerly E, Extreme E. How can investors become involved in this evolution? There is a big challenge. Um, the industry is going through a tough time, and the big car manufacturers are deploying huge amounts of capital to prepare for the electric car revolution. But still, and you know, we have to be honest with ourselves, people are not buying massively those electric cars. Why? Price and range anxiety. And those two things um, are you know, huge challenges. Companies, big companies like the Volkswagen Group, like many others, are really doing a huge bet on electric cars. But the business model, they're struggling to find the business model where they can make money out of those sales of electric cars. So we have a big challenge in front of us. It doesn't mean we have to give up. I think electric cars are the future. There are different technologies that can help store the energy. Battery, I believe, is going to be the future. But there are also other people that defend hydrogen, maybe a good option, etc. I think this change, this evolution and revolution to electric cars will happen no matter what, but it's not going to be an easy one. And for investors, you have to be, you know, you have to be careful on where you invest. Uh, I mean, our, our friends and colleagues of PIF, they're extremely clever investors, and they have invested in uh, Lucid, in, uh, in a battery-making company. Um, I think a really good investment is Formula E. You know, our investors are really happy. Uh, and now extremely, but you know, it's uh, jokes apart. It's a it's a it's a tricky it's a tricky moment for the car industry in general, and and this transition is not going to be easy. And does public policy have a role to play in this? Public policy has a very very important role, and I mean, I'm, I'm not a real, you know, I'm, I'm not too much on on public intervention in the economy. I have a few prime ministers uh, in front of us. Pierre Fillon himself is a great um, car expert and driver. Um, but in this case, public policy is necessary. In this transition, in everything related to climate change and to the fight against city pollution, 
uh, public policies are going to be very necessary. And Peter, my last question to you would be, um, you know, you're gonna start season six, so what's coming up next for Lucid Motors? Well, um, we hope for a great season six. We've actually just uh, secured season eight, so that's, that's sort of hot news. We've just recently done that, so we're delighted to support the sport through uh, a prolonged tenure. I think that we can look for uh, improvements, incremental improvements of our battery throughout that period to make the sport ever more exciting. And of course, I'm really excited because Lucid Air is gonna launch uh, in just over a year's time. And I really want to say thank you to the, uh, the Public Investment Fund for making that a possibility. Thank you so much. And realizing this dream of breaking, bringing the very latest, the next generation electric car to the market, uh, a car which I think will uh, transform the industry and, 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 and be welcome all around the world. Alejandro, Peter, thank you so well, much sir. for your time today. Thank you. Bonsoir.